Welcome to AEHelp.com's IELTS test preparation videos. Are you ready? Let's practice for a band 9. You are the candidate and I am the examiner. After your practice, I will face off with another examiner to show you exactly how to do this. Remember, use the time between my questions to give an answer, an explanation and a smooth example. The subtitles are there to guide you, but I encourage you to try and give your own answer first. Let's begin. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian and I will be your examiner for this part of the test and I will record this for marking purposes. What is your full name? May I see your identification? Thank you. Okay, here's your passport back. For part one, I will ask you a few more questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. How did you come to this exam? Do you have any hobbies? Let's talk about walking. How often do you go for a walk? Where do you usually walk? Do you like to walk at a fast or at a slow pace? What do you like to wear on your feet when you go for a walk? Have your walking habits changed in the past 10 years and if yes, how? If you could walk around any place for an hour, where would you go and why? That is the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. Before watching this part one speaking interview between me and another examiner for that band nine, I want to tell you about a really special opportunity with Lingoda to perfect your English for your next IELTS speaking interview with intensive three months of practice with real professionals. When you complete the super sprint event, which is 30 classes each month, one hour a day for three months, Lingoda will refund 100% of your payment. Or you can choose the sprint event, which is 15 classes each month, one hour a day, and Lingoda will refund 50% of your payment upon successful completion. 
The next sprint event starts January 15th, 2021. But you must sign up no later than December 28th, 2020. Spaces are limited, so hurry up and book your spot today. Both the Sprint and the Super Sprint event require a 49 euro deposit. But wait, Lingoda has given us this special code also in the video description to save 10 euros from this registration fee. And Lingoda will even refund this registration fee upon successful completion. In addition, when you sign up for the Sprint or Super Sprint event, you will get free access to Cambridge's online speaking tests. Over 35,000 people have participated in past Sprint events. Many of these were IELTS students who then got high band scores and succeeded on their exam to join university or to immigrate abroad. I have been learning Spanish with Lingoda for the past few months and so far I've been loving it. Classes are small. There are an average of three to four students in each class, so you get lots of time with the tutors to practice your speaking. In order to help you with your progress, Lingoda has a gift for you, a habit tracker that will be sent to you by email once you register for the next sprint event. This will allow you to keep track of your progress and make sure that you succeed. This is the perfect plan for you to get those high band scores on your next IELTS exam. Now, let's continue practicing part two and part three of this speaking interview, followed with an example where I face off with another examiner. For part two, here's a card with some questions on that. Please don't turn it over yet. Here is some note paper and a pencil. You will have one minute to look at the card, read the questions, think about your answers, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Go ahead and turn over the card. Your two minutes preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Your two minutes is up. I will stop you there. And now I'm going to take back the note paper and the card with the questions and the pencil, and we will continue with 
part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about recycling and waste. How has waste management changed over the past century? How will it change in the future? Some people neglect to recycle their rubbish as they used to. What can be done to discourage this behavior? Why is this important? Which behaviors should be encouraged in current and future generations to reduce waste and safeguard the environment? How can this be done? Let's talk about nature's wisdom. If people continue to abuse the environment, what will be the consequences? What are the warning signs of such consequences that we can observe today? Some people believe that it is too late for people to reverse the damage already done to the planet. Do you agree with this? Why or why not?
That is the end of part three, and that concludes the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. You will have your mark in about 10 days time with the other sections. Have a great rest of your day, and do remember to take your passport with you. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Eva, and I will be your examiner for this part of the test. The test will have three parts. I will give you instructions for each part, and I will have to record this for marking purposes. So in the first part, uh, I will ask you a few questions just to get to know you a bit better, and then after that, some questions about the general topic. Uh, first of all, what is your full name? My given name is Adrian and my uh, surname is Lee. Um, please just call me Adrian. Okay, Adrian. Uh, may I see your identification, please? Yes, absolutely. Here's my passport. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Thanks. So how did you come to this exam? Well, uh, I came to this exam by public, public transit. Uh, I took the number three metro, about uh, six stops, and then walked for about another uh, three minutes. I was a bit nervous, so I didn't want to drive. Do you have any hobbies? I do. I have a few hobbies, uh, namely collecting coins and comics. I just love the stories that these items tell. Okay, now let's talk about walking. How often do you go for a walk? Um, I often go for walks, I would say at least two to three times uh, each day, um, just because there are so many places uh, conveniently located near my home, such as the grocery, sh uh, grocery shop or um, uh, the gym where I work out. Where do you usually walk? Well, uh, as I had just said, um, either to buy groceries a couple minutes from my flat, there's um, a nice big store and um, Red Gym, which is approximately uh, two minutes, about 200 yards from my flat. I go there three times a week. Um, as well, uh, I go to the mall uh, that's a couple blocks away uh, to do my uh, banking. Do you like to walk at a fast or a slow pace? I'm definitely a fast walker. Uh, often people are asking me to slow down when I'm walking with them. Uh, some people even say that I walk almost uh, at the pace of a slow jog. Uh, I really like to just get to where I'm going and not waste time. What do you like to wear on your feet when you go for a walk? Um, mostly I wear sneakers. I have a comfortable uh, pair of uh, running shoes and um, that's what I wear I'd say about eight months of the year and then in the summertime I switch to uh, sandals. Have your walking habits changed in the past 10 years? I think the way that I walk has um, improved uh, quite a bit, especially in the last two years, uh, just because I've been running uh, recently, which I didn't do before. And um, I used to walk a little bit uh, pigeon uh, toed, so now uh, my feet are a little bit more straight when I'm walking. Uh, if you walk around any place for an hour, where would you go? Hmm. Given the chance to take a 60 minute stroll anywhere in the world, I would probably choose uh, maybe the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. I've never been there and it looks like an incredible building. I'm sure I could spend an easy hour uh, walking around. Okay, thank you. That is the end of part one. Now we'll move on to part two. For this, I will give you uh, a card with some questions on it. Don't turn it over just yet. Uh, you will have one minute to read the questions and prepare your answers. Uh, and also you can take some notes if you wish. Here's some note paper and also pencil that you can use. Uh, after the one minute preparation time, you will have two minutes to talk about the topic. Uh, I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's begin. Your one minute preparation time starts now. Okay. Okay, uh, your one minute preparation time is up. Uh, please begin speaking. 
Uh, an idea that I had not so long ago, sometime um, last July, to help um, protect nature is to organize a community cleanup crew in my neighborhood. I had this idea because uh, I'd been walking around um, in the uh, neighborhood over the last few years since I moved to this region and I noticed that there was a lot of waste just carelessly uh, thrown away by people. Um, pop bottles, uh, plastic containers, uh, even uh, styrofoam newspapers in the ditches uh, near the uh, on the sides of the road uh, and in the park. So um, I came up with the notion to um, campaign around uh, my uh, block and ask my neighbors to join forces with me and um, create a, basically a group who would gather every uh, Saturday uh, morning for an hour or two and um, on designated routes pick up all of the garbage that we see, uh, sort the garbage into uh, different kinds of um, recycling bins for papers, plastics, metals, and glass. Uh, in order to make this idea become a reality, uh, I needed to do the work, talk to the neighbors, uh, as well as organize a schedule. I used Google Drive to coordinate all the people. And uh, then we submitted a proposal to our local municipality for some funding for the equipment. Um, this idea worked out really well and it's functioning to this day. Uh, the neighborhood is a lot cleaner as a result and we can see that um, uh, everybody's enjoying the surroundings. Uh, the parks are cleaner. I'm sure the plants are happier as well. Um, and uh, it might even be having a positive effect on uh, tourism in our local area just because it's more pleasant to um, uh, stroll around in the parks and in the streets. Okay, uh, your time is up. So this is the end of part two. Uh, please, can I have the card, mm -hmm. the pencil and the paper bag? Thank you. Go. Okay, so now we will continue with part three. Uh, in this part, I will ask you a few questions that are related to the topic of part two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about recycling and waste. How has waste management changed over the past century? <laughs> Well, I would say that a hundred years ago, there really wasn't a system in place to manage garbage. Um, perhaps in the cities, uh, garbage was collected and taken away. Uh, otherwise, uh, I believe that recycling was virtually unheard of. As were these days, uh, we have um, waste management systems uh, that uh, separate especially dangerous waste such as chemicals uh, from other rubbish. And of course, now we have well-established recycling centers, uh, which um, refurbish uh, or reuse a lot of the materials such as plastics and metals. How will it change in the future? I think that as technology improves, so too will the ways that we manage our waste, uh, especially as um, uh, nature puts a greater strain on humans to pay more attention to this. Um, for our own uh, survival and benefit. So I think that um, even more kinds of materials will be uh, recyclable and I think that uh, people will also be forced to reuse a lot more of their containers and other products um, than in the past. Some people neglect to recycle their rubbish as they should. What can be done to discourage this behavior? Um, that's a very valuable an important question in today's society. I think that uh, in order to uh, stop people from avoiding uh, their um, recycling responsibilities, uh, governments, authorities have to step in uh, and um, basically punish them with uh, strict fines, uh, such as a thousand dollar fine uh, if they are to find um, plastics and paper uh, combined with their garbage bins. Why is this important? This is critical for the uh, prosperity and survival of the human race. Um, the resources on our planet are finite and if we don't take care of them, uh, we will have less of them and eventually it will lead to our own dem demise. Which behaviors should be encouraged in current and future generations to reduce waste 
and safeguard the environment? Hmm. Well, there are two uh, very important factors uh, uh, in response to this. Uh, firstly, uh, people have to be motivated to um, reuse what they have. So rather than um, throwing away uh, paper or coffee cups every day, uh, using a plastic mug that they refill and even take with them to the coffee shops. Uh, furthermore, I think that um, uh, people need to consume less. So we live in a world of overconsumption where people are buying a lot more than what they need and therefore they're creating a lot of excessive garbage and this has to eventually stop. How can this be done? Well, I don't think this will be easy, um, but yeah, I do believe that people can achieve these goals uh, with uh, some education and um, other types of motivational uh, factors uh, such as um, taking people out to nature and showing them the beauty of the world around them, the forests, the plants, the animals, so that they develop the respect needed to make these changes in their behaviors. Let's talk about nature's wisdom now. If people continue to abuse the environment, what will be the consequences? I think that a lot of the conse consequences of um, neglecting nature are, are, are already evident around us with the disappearance of many species of flora and fauna. Uh, I'm uh, sad to say that I believe tigers may be uh, an animal that our grandchildren will no longer be able to see because there are so few of them and eventually I think that people uh, themselves might, eventually, might become extinct if we don't take better care of nature. What are the warning signs of such consequences that we can observe today? Well, what I've just said, the disappearance of certain species, also the contamination and pollution that we can observe in our daily lives with um, the changing colors of lakes and rivers, uh, where in our childhood many of the rivers around us were crystal clear, now they're brown and murky. Um, also, uh, the deforestation that we can uh, see when we're in a plain and we look down where there used to be forests and there are now no longer such forests. Some people believe that it is too late for people to reverse the damage already done to the planet. Do you agree with this? Why or why not? Um, I don't agree with this. Although I sound uh, pessimistic, I do like to think of myself as an optimist and I believe that humans are uh, incredible, especially when we band together uh, to fix problems. And I do think that we will be able to come up with solutions uh, to pollution and the damage that we've done, um, such as um, building uh, better recycling centers, but even better waste management, what we talked about earlier. Uh, and I think humans will be forced to just consume less for their own survival. Okay, and that is the end of part three, which concludes the speaking test. Your mark will be available within two weeks, along with the marks uh, for the other sections as well. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and make sure to take your passport. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. To get over a hundred hours of video lessons with strategies and practice to help you get those high band scores, as well as original practice exams and a fully interactive course, visit and join us at aehelp.com. Also, make sure to download and link our app, Academic IELTS Help. Begin learning for success today. Subscribe to our channel. Click over here. Watch another video. Click right up here. And click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.